G'day guys, Alex from Axe Physio here. Today we're talking about ACL rehab again, and specifically we're looking at beginner plyometric exercises after the return to run phase. I've already done a video on how to get back to running, and I'll link that in the description below. But today we're talking about beginner exercises after running. So I like to think about plyometric exercises as a continuum of movement patterns all the way through to those really cool, uh, exciting, explosive exercises that a lot of people will see on the internet. But we can't get to that phase, that late stage, high end rehab, if we haven't done the fundamental plyometrics at the beginning with mastery of correct movement patterns. So that's in a forwards direction, a side to side direction, and then looking at incorporating multi-directional, not only movement drills, but plyometric drills as well. So that's what we're gonna be covering today, guys. Let's jump into that first exercise. So we're gonna start from easiest and work our way to hardest. This exercise is in the return to run program, but it's a great warm up exercise later on down the track, so I'm keeping it in there, and that is wall marches. We can start with single leg, where we're just exchanging over, but the technique here is pushing down hard through the ankle, keeping the knee locked, and keeping our bum squeezed so that your hips are locked, and that is the triple extension position. Start by performing exchanges, as seen here, and it should be really taxing, even with singles. From here, we then go on to triples. We're trying to expend as little amount of time on the ground as possible because we are developing the springs in our Achilles and just being springy in the lower limb in general. Spend as little amount of time on the ground, exchange quickly, nice high leg drive. This is a great representation of the athletic position, especially when we're doing things like sprinting. You can then increase to multiple exchanges to work that a little bit harder and for longer. From here, we can then go on to double leg pogos. Pogos are a great way to develop that spring in our Achilles. We want to make sure that our toes are more flexed towards the ceiling and not pointed towards the ground. We're trying to be as springy and spend as least amount of time on the ground as possible and we're trying to float for as long as we can as we push off. Start with double leg. It's a great way to make sure that you get that springiness back, especially after an ACL recon. Once you get comfortable with that, moving on to a single leg is a great next step. You won't be able to jump as high, but make sure you try to keep that stiffness through the lower limb. So not only the ankle, but definitely the knee as well. Don't collapse too far down. A standard double leg tuck jump is a great way to develop lower leg explosiveness in general. Here we're focusing on the entire lower limb and not just the ankles. We want to make sure that we are as springy as we can, but make sure that your knees and hips are in good alignment. We're not seeing any buckling on the knee on the ACL side or on the opposite side for that matter. The next progression is to do a single leg jump, but a double leg land. The landing is always the hard part. It's the part that's not all that safe when you haven't practiced. So make sure that you use the single leg jump because it makes you work harder on the leg, but then it's safer to land with two. From here that we can then go on to doing a single leg jump and a single leg land. You have to work on being really explosive, but there is also that really good control element that I alluded to in the introduction. So make sure that we get really good at this exercise. It's the last one that I get patients to do before they return to run. So we definitely, after the running phase, should be able to do these. From here, we can then look at going in different directions. So moving forward with a single leg forward hop. Now, early on, you won't be too explosive with this, but this exercise can get harder. We just start easy. We get the fundamental movement patterns back. We start to work forwards in a, in a very controlled way where the hips, knees, ankles are all in fairly reasonable alignment and we're not collapsing on the landing. From here, you can then jump further, be more explosive and make it as hard as you would like. Naturally, our next progression is a triple hop where we're trying to spend as little amount of time on the ground as possible in that second or third jump before we land. Make sure that when you're doing this exercise, you're being as springy as possible and you're using those fundamentals that you've learned from the wall marches and the pogos. We're trying to be snappy. We're trying to be like a spring. So also try to work on things like height and distance. That'll mean that you're working harder as well. So like I said, guys, this may not look like what you were expecting, but you definitely need to have the ability to do this. Now, depth jumps are probably one of the first plyometric exercises that many people will recognize. This is not it. This is just practicing the landing pattern before we do the explosive part. For people that have undergone an ACL recon, doing a depth jump can be a bit daunting. So just practice the landing mechanics. Make sure we're getting our body in a good position before we explode up. 
same thing here we're trying to spend as little amount of time on the ground as possible and we're trying to get off the ground for as long as possible so obviously the harder you jump the less time you spend on the ground the better we're trying to not have the heels in contact with the ground for too long ideally if we could spend as little amount of contact time with the heel on the ground as possible that would be great and as you can see from the side on view I do spend a little bit of time on the ground but it's not for very long so exploding up but definitely keeping my time minimal on the ground you don't want to do too many reps either plyometrics is about quality over quantity well and truly from here we can go on to doing single leg depth jumps but please make sure that you practice and you're in a really safe area i probably wouldn't recommend doing it on a bench in a park definitely in a controlled environment in a gym where it's flat you have a really solid area to land on will make things a little bit easier i had a bit of a tough time in the park here as the ground was a bit uneven but yeah definitely moving on to our single leg jumps as well um, you definitely will not spend as much time on the ground if anything i probably should have had a lower height to jump off because of the jump being too high, there was too much force on me for me to jump up with just the one leg. And you'll see from the side on angle here that I don't spend, or I do spend too much time on the ground. But on the front on angle, make sure that you've got really good hip, knee, and ankle position as well, guys. So once again, from the side on here, you'll see I spend a lot of time on the ground. If I had a lower height to jump off, I'd be able to be a little bit more explosive explosive sorry because I'm not dealing with the forces on top of me uh, as in gravity when doing this exercise so make sure that your alignment's good make sure that you still try to work on spending as little amount of time on the ground as possible and make sure you make it quality over quantity guys another fundamental movement pattern is a box jump it's just a jump up onto another object it's a little bit similar in terms of um, the family as a tuck jump as in we're exploding up this is probably a bit more to do with movement patterns as opposed to plyometrics but definitely we've all seen people on the internet do those really impressive um, counter movement jumps which is when you drop down into the jump position and explode up so with a higher box with a um, more explosive demand later on in the rehab process, a box jump will turn into a plyometric exercise as well. A single leg box jump is the next progression here, making sure that we're working on that strength and explosiveness in the lower limb in general. I always land with two feet. I don't really use this as a landing tool. I try to make it as safe as possible for people, especially early on. So land with two feet, guys. Don't feel pressured to jump with one leg and land with one leg. That's not the purpose of the exercise. The purpose is what happens as you leave the ground. So those are some great exercises for static and linear jumping. Now we're going to work on side to side movements. Before I allow people to move on to doing side to side, they've definitely got a good mastery of static and forwards or linear patterns with regards to their movement mechanics and their plyometrics. Just because this is a little bit more daunting for people to move in a frontal plane or a side to side plane, which is what I'm doing here. So starting with the double leg jump side to side is a great way just to get people to practice and feel comfortable with doing this movement technique. No, it's not a plyometric exercise, but yes, it is a really good fundamental movement pattern. Once you've got mastery with the double leg, we can then move on to single leg. Now the key here is once again movement patterns, but what we're trying to achieve here is good hip, knee and ankle control. I shouldn't be collapsing through my hip and falling over, but I also shouldn't be over leaning with my trunk. So you'll see in some of my jumps there that I really lean over my hip with my trunk and that's to compensate from perhaps a strength issue, but also a coordination issue as well. We can then work on doing synced lateral jumps, which is getting a little bit more into the plyometric um, space if we were to do these a lot faster. But once again, it's, it's more about the movement patterns here. Make sure we've got good hip, knee and ankle control. And when you land, you land and stick the landing, guys. Now, instead of just doing synced together, we can now work on distance and now we're getting into that realm of power because you're having to go a bit further and you're being a bit more explosive still work on the landing now you could do the push off and land with two feet and just work on the power but here i'm doing both now a great test that i get all my patients to do and i just wanted to sneak this one in here is the lateral hop test it's for 30 seconds 
you've got two lines on the ground 40 centimeters apart you're making sure that you don't touch the line and it's as many times as you can jump over those two lines within that 30 second time limit. We then compare the score on one leg compared to the other side. Just make sure that if you touch the line or you fall over or anything, you just get up and you keep going until the 30 seconds is over. And then you go back through the film and count your reps. We want there to be within a 95% or more comparison between the two sides, meaning that if the right got 40 and the left got 42, uh, that would be within 95%. But if the right got 40 and the left got 25, we know there's some work to be done and that's just an idea as to the symmetry between both your legs in a movement capacity but also a strength capacity as well. So now that we've developed movement comprehension and plyometric power in static positions, in linear forward hopping positions and side to side positions, we can then work on incorporating some more game time situations or game like drills. Uh, these are for obviously more field sports and we just have to get a little bit more inventive if this doesn't quite replicate things that you would do on the field. So a wide drill is a great place to start where you can come up, change direction, you can either know which way you're going to change direction or someone can signal which way for you to go and you can modify it to your heart's content. In a lot of team sports and field sports, the drop step is a great defensive maneuver that people will use to stay on the right side of the ball, the right side of the player. Practicing the moves that are in your sport are really important. So for this, this might be rugby or soccer or basketball. It's working on being explosive on the push-off when you turn to chase the person. You're working laterally. You're working in a linear motion when you turn. Same with the backwards reaction drill. Someone here is telling me which way to go. I'm working back to the cone, pushing back off working back to where they tell me to go and I'm going and I'm pushing back off. I'm working in different planes of motion here. It's trying to replicate things you would have to do when you go back to your sport. If you think of things that are really important, like moves that you would do on the court, different um, exercises or things that you have to do defensively or offensively, we need to practice those and to do them quickly because in a game you'll definitely do them quickly. The side to side drill is a great way to move laterally and then react when the person says go and then you stop, you push off and then react explosively over a five minute period. The four square drill is a reaction drill where someone's telling you where to go, back left, front right, etc. Here the person then in the middle has to react and use the most appropriate movement pattern they have at their disposal. So moving forward, touching, they then might have to repeat that same movement and then they might tell them to turn and go to the opposite corner. And the ability to have the right decision making and put yourself in the right position and react explosively is exactly what you're going to have to do in the game. So we need to do it in physio, in rehab, in practice. So guys, I hope you've taken away that we need to have really good fundamental movement patterns in all the different planes of motion. We also need to be making sure that we're doing different drills that replicate the sport that we're doing. I it would be irresponsible to think that any one rehab program in ACL is appropriate for everyone in all the different sports and even positions within the same sport, you're gonna have differences as well. So make sure that we're being as specific as we can to you the person and to you the sport and to you the position that you are playing. Really hope you're taking a few things from that. Please share this video with someone that you know that also may need it, or even if it's just sharing it on a forum or some other ACL page. That would just greatly help me out and hopefully help someone else out as well. I hope you have a great day, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.